This is a Schrade Uncle Henry. It's a traditional Stockman uh, style knife. Um, and it, it, I bring it out today because it's exemplary of a few knives we're going to talk about. Um, these knives are all knives that I think are worthy additions to my collection. They're, they're knives that I, I enjoy and I think are, are very interesting. But they're knives that I don't carry for one reason or another. Um, this knife in particular as well, uh, well this knife uh, in addition to the other knives that I'm going to talk about today, um, it's something that I got relatively cheaply. It, I got it, this one, one in particular was at an antique shop. Um, I usually get these second hand uh, and, and they're all, they kind of fill a unique void in my collection. Um, and that's why I, I picked them up, but I don't always carry them. Um, uh, this is the, uh, as I said, the Schrade Uncle Henry. Uh, the Tang stamp says Schrade Plus USA and then eight I think it's 897UH. Yes, it is. Um, and uh, like I said, it's a Stockman uh, uh, design. It's got a uh, large blade. Usually this is a clip point. I don't know if this is technically a clip point based on the, uh, the cut. I guess it could be a, a very long clip point, but it is a uh, typically a clip point. Uh, sheep's foot blade here. And then um, kind of a draw point. I, this one almost seems like a spay blade, but a lot of these are just a, a pretty simple spear point or draw point. Um, and uh, it's got the, you know, kind of faux antler, I think that's supposed to be, but this is faux. I did confirm that. Um, and uh, it's just an interesting, interesting design. Uh, I think it's a, a really good example of a traditional folder. It's something that I could see my grandpa carrying. Um, it's it's uh it's size is it's not a too big let's grab that big blade out it's not a particularly large knife but it does it does fit in the hand totally fine um you know i've got i wear size large gloves and and i get a four finger grip on that uh handle um if we line that up with the 10 there it's going to be about uh about three inches on the blade or, or a little less two and three quarters almost um, on the blade edge, uh, it'll be three with the full tang, um, or the, um, Ricasso there. Uh, and then the handles one, two, three and three quarters, almost three and a half, a little over three and a half. Um, so that's, you know, that's a good size knife for, for slicing an apple. You're not going to be limited by that blade length. And then you've got the two shorter blades as well, which are, um, to be useful, um, but uh, it, it's just a it's a good kind of traditional knife, and it's and it's something that fits in my collection and like no other knife uh, that I that I have does. Um, but I still don't carry it, and uh, I think there's a couple reasons for that, and I think it stems back to that kind of traditionalist sort of style that this knife gives. Uh, first of all, it is three blades, and I don't need three blades. Um, it, it's excessive and, you know, you could carry a Victorinox Pocket Pal. It's going to be similar size, but a lot thinner and a lot lighter because, and, th and that has two blades, which you probably don't need, but um, three is, is, I think, just one too many for my liking. Um, and I know that you can get, well, I assume you can get uh, two layer variants of knives like these, at least, not uh, Stockman necessarily, but um, but even those, I just don't tend to gravitate towards those multi-blade knives. Um, the other thing is without a clip or any, or even a lanyard ring that you could put a, uh, a dangler on, this is gonna just drop into the bottom of the pocket. And, uh, you know, it's a slip joint, it's a two-handed opening, you're digging it out of your pocket. It doesn't serve that utilitarian need that I have on a day-to-day -day basis to have relatively quick access to a knife. Um, I'm trying not to be super picky because if I'm too picky, I only end up carrying one knife over and over again, but um, this just does not have the options I need. And if it's gonna go in the bottom of the pocket and I'm gonna carry another knife with a pocket clip, uh, then you've got four blades, and now we've even amplified the uh, the unnecess uh, uh the uh, unnecessariness, whatever um, the ex excess of 
carrying three blades, we've amplified that up to four. So that is why the, the Uncle Henry does not live in my pocket. It doesn't even, it goes in a box and doesn't live with my uh, everyday carry knives. Um, switching things up to a, to a very different style of knife. Uh, another knife that I, I quite like, really, really like this knife, but I don't carry it, is the Cold Steel Tough Light. This knife is just, I think it's a cool shape. It is uh, Aus 8A steel. It's got, uh, it's got this really interesting grind. This lower portion is uh, um, hollow ground, and then it's got a secondary bevel. Um, real decent thick blade stock. It's a uh, two inch cutting edge and a, the Warncliffe blade, which I think for utility work is just, I love Warncliffe or Sheep's Foot, I think are very, very um, useful knives for day to day. It's like having a razor blade or a, a utility knife. Uh, Grivex handles, they're, they're decent. There was, um, along this edge, it does get, it can get a little bit pokey, but I think I ended up almost um, working those down with a bit of uh, ceramic rod or a diamond stone or something. And uh, it fits, I mean, it fits absolutely great in the hand. I, I wanted, so I, I had started kind of getting into cold steel knives and seeing a lot about them online. Never been a knife that I carry, um, but a lot of them are kind of crazy. And this just seemed, I mean, again, this is this is not a huge knife. Um, three to nine is six inches and maybe a quarter on top. And it is, um, it's a cold steel knife that's not that's not totally crazy. Um, it doesn't have, you know, an eight inch blade and it doesn't have, uh, um, the, the, their Emerson wave disc thing that they do. And, uh, I just, I, this is a, to me, this is a great, it's probably good for other things, but it looks like a great utility knife. But I, I well, let me, let me continue to talk about the good things before I get into the, the things that I don't, I don't love. Um, it does have uh, the triad lock, which is supposed to be a phenomenal lockup. Um, it fits, it fits, it's a small knife, but it fits in the hand great. Again, pretty, uh, you know, above average size hands. And you get those two fingers in those uh, grooves. You've got two extra fingers without any issue. And it just fits. I'm going to pause right there because I think Amazon's calling me and they're probably trying to deliver something. All right, we have secured the bag. Amazon delivery was successful. They needed a signature because our settings are set up wrong. But <laughs> getting back to the topic of the hour, uh, the Tough Light from Cold Steel. As I said, it fits great in the hand. Um, and it's just, I, I like, I may be in the minority here, but I really like a small knife with a big handle. I feel so much in control of this little blade. You know, you could choke up on it and really use it for detailed work, or you can grip into it fully and slice through some boxes, no problem. Um, why don't I carry it? Well, let me bring in my tiny knife of choice. This is the Boker Warcom, Boker Plus Warcom, Boker Warcom. Um, I've had this for almost 10 years. Um, they don't make them anymore. They're impossible to find the Warncliffe style because they come in a drop point as well. But this has been a constant go-to for a couple of reasons. Um, because it has that tiny blade, it's a, it's a three finger grip, but it is a secure th three finger grip. And let me flip these to the side because not only is it shorter, it's a heck of a lot thinner. This will slip into a fifth pocket on a pair of jeans and completely disappear. And you can bypass it easily. This Tough Light is a lot thicker. And let me bring in my kind of default uh, everyday carry knife, the Benchmade Mini Bug Out. Um, I've told you I like small knives. This is way smaller in the pocket. I mean, it's, it's similar in, in height. Um, if we look at the thickness, yeah, the bug out's got a little bit there. I wouldn't mind a thicker knife. I think I could handle that. But in this width, you've got all of this extra blade sticking out of the handle. 
and that just, when it sits in the pocket and your hand tries to go past it, it gets in the way, which is super unfortunate for such a an interesting and small knife. Um, I, I do, I love this knife. I love the, the finger choil. Uh, allows you to, to one hand close it and it's not gonna completely cut your finger off. Um, just nice, I, it, it's a good knife, but I just can't, I can't seem to get it in my pocket. And the last knife on the table today is this Case Sodbuster Jr. Again, a flea market find, super cheap, um, under $20, probably under $15. Um, really, really, a knife that I like. Um, it is, let's see, it's marked on the back, USA 2137, and then SS, which I assume is for stainless steel, which this is. Um, love the little plow, uh, pictogram on the uh, blade as well as the, the text. I think that's really interesting. Um, I'm almost afraid to put this into hard use and wear that off, but I, it's not really, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's not a super expensive knife. It's, it's fine to put to work. Um, it's got uh, the black synthetic handles. Um, and what's really interesting, I, I don't know if you can see with the light there, that's a hollow grind on the blade, um, full hollow grind. I bet this thing would be quite slicey um, without sacrificing some of that strength. Um, let's see, what else is there worth talking about? Why did I buy this knife? Um, it is uh, similar, or, well, in the same kind of vein as the Uncle Henry. Um, it's a slip joint that's not a Victorinox. I have, I actually have a lot of Victorinox knives that I, because you see them and you, they're five bucks and you buy them at, at these flea markets and antique shows um, or antique malls. But, uh, you know, you can only have so many and so many different or so many of the same, uh, the same basic, you know, Victorinox classic SDs that are floating around everywhere for five bucks. Um, so I thought, well, let's, let's try a different brand of, of slip joint. Um, case is a, is a knife that, you know, case knife is a, is a, almost a Kleenex level term at this point, um, or it was in the past, maybe, um, it's, uh, it's maybe not a, a super refined knife, but it looks like a knife that can, can do work. It looks like a durable knife and, uh, you know, the Sodbuster name, maybe that's just great marketing, but I could see digging in the dirt with this and, and using it to scrape, you know, stuff away off of, off of, uh, hard, hard use conditions, I guess. Um, but why don't I carry it? Um, well, first of all, I don't know. I, you, you can't see this, but it feels like there's sand in the mechanism. And I've cleaned this out and this, this clearly has not been used. I didn't put an edge on this and it is darn near shaven sharp. Um, this has not been used hard. Uh, but it, there is something about that mechanism that feels like there is sand in there. It is, uh, it is gritty and it's a little bit, the, the pull to open is just a little bit much, um, for what I would like. It's, you know, it's, that's good on the back end. It's not going to break over on you super easy, but it's a, just a little gritty. It's also a little bit small in my hand for hard use. Can't quite get four fingers on there without, you know, you can write up onto that Ricasso, which, but that's not a super, that's not big, you know, I don't know if I would trust it. I think I could still get the meat of my hand if this decided to go snap over. Um, it feels like if it was just a little bit longer, and maybe that's the Sodbuster versus the Sodbuster Jr. Um, but just a little bit smaller than I think would be good for hard use. And again, all of these are, are I don't seek a lot of these out. Um, every knife today was was bought spur of the moment because it was in front of me. And that's kind of how I like to go about this, this sort of collecting. Um, there's obviously room for seeking out and purchasing something. Um, you know, my, my mini bug out is something I bought because I'm gonna use it every day. But uh, if I'm not gonna use it every day, I'm not gonna go take the time to research and spend the, and find the right price, the best price and find, you know, which variant I want. But if I see this, you know, at a booth, at a, at a, uh, an antique shop or a, a flea market, and it's the price is, 
you know, 20 bucks, why not give it a shot, have it, put it in the collection, be able to enjoy it. And that's kind of where I'm, all of these knives, that's kind of where my head is at lately. Now, let me open up this uh, trade here. But the, 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 the thing is, these are all knives I bought because I thought they were cool and, and they do serve a purpose. You know, I do carry a knife and I do use one every single day. Um, it's not a matter of, you know, oh, I just think it's cool. Um, it is it is to serve a purpose. But what's wrong with enjoying these types of things? And what's wrong with carrying them, you know, not because they're the most useful tool uh, you could possibly carry. Because, yeah, I mean, you could carry a Leatherman and it would be potentially better than any, any knife that you're going to carry because it's got five extra tools. But there's something to be said about the satisfaction of, you know, that, that axis lock in the case of the Benchmade. Um, that, that way that that, that uh, Boker just hides away in your pocket, gives you a nice, comfortable grip on a tiny little blade that'll get most jobs done just fine. I think the same can be said about these three knives and, and in a lot of knives in a lot of people's collections. Um, so I think it's worth the effort, which which I'm I'm making a conscious effort to be able to just slip this into my pocket. Maybe I'm maybe I'm carrying, you know, the bug out as well. But maybe I slip this into my pocket. This, you know, this would be a good food prep. You know, I, I slice an apple, open an orange up. Um, you know, that's something that and it's and it's I'd wash it off first, but it's it's not very used and it's stainless, and that might be a great little food prep knife. You know, maybe this Uncle Henry would just be fun to slip into a pocket and and uh, and just carry around for a day, regardless of whether it's the most functional and maybe there's a little bit of extra weight, but not everything needs to be perfect all the time. And maybe that tough light can can come with me on a couple of you know uh, adventures that need a little uh, need a little tough little. A uh, knife added to the equation. I don't know. I don't know why, but you don't always have to know why. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at with these knives in my collection. I'm really um, pulling these out today and looking through them. And kind of, I, I did a little research before, kind of looked into, you know, the histories. And, and it's just really interesting. Um, you know, there's some interesting knives. I think they'd be fun to carry. And I think that's something that I'm gonna I'm gonna make a conscious effort to do going forward. So I hope I hope this kind of I, th I hope these knives were we found them interesting. Um, I, like I think they're they're just super interesting knives, but um, they're a little different than than what I would normally talk about, what I would normally carry. But um, they might uh, spark an interest in you, and and uh, I think the bigger conversation is about you know how we carry these things and why we carry these things, and and uh, maybe we don't need to chase after that utilitarianism uh, to quite the same degree. Uh, if it works and it uh, makes us happy, what's wrong with that? So I really love that sod buster. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope that was a little bit enlightening, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.